Good morning, guys. Welcome to your hurricane report. Now, here's what I want to say. Uh, today is Tuesday, September 11th, 2018. Uh, we're going to take a look at Florence, and we're going to open up the charts right here. Uh, now, here's what we're going to look at is uh, the hurricane itself, you know. I mean, we've had a little change in the the plan for the hurricane from the National Hurricane Center from what it was last night. Now, last night, they were showing it going up to 145, 150 miles an hour, just, just like they are now. Okay, so now in 36 hours, they're predicting it'll go up to 100, uh, 150 miles an hour wind speed. And they were last night predicting 150 mile an hour wind speed as well. But there's the deviation in the plane's in the plan between last night and today is this 72 hour period just before the hurricane makes landfall. Last night they were predicting that it was going to be in excess of 140 miles an hour at landfall. Uh, now they are predicting at 72 hours just before landfall they're predicting 130 miles an hour. Now I'm going to tell you what Sometimes that can make the difference whether your roof flies off or not. Uh, the difference between 100 and say 145 mile an hour and 130 mile an hour. And, and so this change that they've made is a little bit of a break in the wind speed when it makes landfall from what they were projecting. Um, they were projecting like 140 uh, mile an hour landfall. Now they're projecting 130. That's a 10 mile an hour drop in the wind speed at landfall. Uh, this this is a big deal. In my mind, this is a big deal because it's going to mean that when it makes landfall, it's not going to tear as many roofs off as it would have torn off because, yes, a 130-mile-an-hour hurricane is still going to tear a few roofs off, probably, right? Uh, especially near the right in near the coast, right where it makes landfall, right in the spot where it, where it, where it slams into the coast. Uh, within about maybe a mile or two of the ocean, you know, that's going to be where it's going to do its clearest and most potent damage. And that drop in wind speed means it's not going to do as much potent damage as it was going to do. So that's good news, really good news. And that's what I wanted to point out this morning. Now we're going to take a look at the hurricane, the path of the hurricane, you know. Uh, she's actually dropped some of her wind speed. Uh, in the past uh, overnight, you know, uh, the location of the hurricane right now is 26.4 degrees north, 64.6 degrees west. Her maximum sustained winds right now are 130 miles an hour. Now, last night it was stronger, but it's dropped off some. Uh, we're going to take a look right here and see how much it's dropped off and the pressure's risen too. Uh, this is good sign. Uh, you see, now last night, this hurricane was dropped its pressure down to right here. Um, it dropped its pressure. It was 140 mile an hour, and it dropped its pressure down to 939 millibars, which is extremely low pressure. And it was looking like it was turning into a uh, more of a tor giant tornado rather than a hurricane last night. But look, the pressure rose during the course of the night. And now we're sitting at we're sitting at 130 miles an hour, which is 10 miles an hour slower, and a a, a pressure that's a little bit higher uh, at 950 millibars, which is good. That's good. Uh, but evidently, it's going to start to strengthen again. It's going to wind back up again. I don't know. Maybe it hit a bit of cold water or whatever, you know. So last night, but it's going to wind back up again. But the real good news is is when we look at this right here. This is kind of good news. Just as it's hitting the coast, just before it makes landfall here, do you see all these squiggly uh, in the, in the, uh, in the, this is, this is the, uh, what you're looking at. I should say what you're looking at right now first. What you're looking at is the uh, computer modeling. Now the red one in the center, that's the uh, National Hurricane Center's charted course for the hurricane they have to pick one of the computer models that's the tightest one to the center of the computer model consensus what we see here is 
just before it hits the coast, these computer models go all squiggly. So just off the coast of the Carolinas, maybe when it's maybe 50 miles away from the coast of the Carolinas, the computer models go all squiggly. What that basically means is it means that the hurricane is going to interact with some sort of a front, frontal boundary, just before it strikes the Carolina coast. And this is probably the reason why the forecast is indicating some loss in strength right here uh, from 145 miles an hour at 48 hours. Okay, so it's going to be approaching the coast, just about at the coast. And then all of a sudden, at 72 hours, drops down from 145 miles an hour to 130. That little drop in, in the wind speeds is going to be, means that it's going to be weakening as it approaches making landfall. Uh, and that's a darn good thing. So, so what I'm pointing out here is all these doomsdayers out there really are telling you that the hurricane's going to be tear everything to pieces. Well, we might catch a little bit of a break because of this weakening. But still, this is an extremely powerful hurricane at 130 miles an hour winds sustain. This is a hurricane that you want to obey the orders that, they're get, that are coming down from the National Hurricane Center to evacuate. You want to obey those orders because 130 mile an hour wind speed. Do you know what the human body does when it goes out into a 130 mile an hour wind and a gust of, say, 145 miles an hour hits your body? Do you know what your body does? It lifts right off of its feet and it flies through the air at 130 miles an hour until it hits something. Now, when you free fall from an airplane with no parachute, you're only going about 80 miles an hour, okay, when you hit something. If you go outside in this hurricane at 130 miles an hour and that gust picks you up and you go flying through the air at 130 miles an hour and you slam into, say, a big tree, you're going to go splat, quite literally. And so this is the reason why they want you to evacuate. Not only that, there's another reason. There's a tremendous storm surge that comes in off of the ocean during a big hurricane like this. And it, it can actually raise the sea level tremendously, maybe 10 feet. So if you're walking in an area that normally is not flooded, okay, when that storm surge comes inland, suddenly there can be 10 feet of water there and you're now you're swimming or drowning. So you want to obey these warnings to evacuate uh, when this hurricane comes in because they know they know the areas that needed to be need to be evacuated and if you're under that evacuation order you should obey it because I'm telling you 130 mile an hour sustained winds is something you don't want to see really you don't want to see stuff flies through the air uh, debris uh, it could be a piece of somebody's roof made of tin. Flying through the air at 130 miles an hour, and you can imagine what that can do. It can come right through the wall of your house. And you think you're safe inside your house during 130 mile an hour wind. You're not. Uh, anyway. Okay, so uh, thank you guys for listening to this hurricane report. Uh, and uh, we're going to keep updated on this hurricane as it comes through. Here's some pictures of the rotating storm. We can see it. In the radar imagery, to me, it looks like it's going through an eye wall replacement cycle. Uh, anyway, here it is showing that striking the coast as a Category 4 uh, a couple days from now. Uh, let's see uh, exactly. Uh, uh, it's going to be prepared to strike the coast at 2 a.m. on Friday. Okay, so there's your there's your time uh, allotted. Uh, Friday at 2 a.m., so early in the morning. It's going to make landfall around that time. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next show. Bye-bye, guys.